then uh, welcome everybody also from my side. So in the next roughly 45 minutes, I will give you an insight in the research activities in fruit and berry cultivation technique at Feeble in Switzerland. So first, a short uh, outline of the presentation that I will give you today. So first, I will just give a few words about Feeble. Then I will go to the pip fruit, stone fruits, berries. And in the end, we will have time for questions, as Agnes told you. And for all the different fruit groups, I will first give a current situation, how the production is uh, for the different fruit groups in organic farming in Switzerland. Then I will also give an overview about research activities that we are doing. And then I will also give some single insight in some uh, research activities with some results. So first for Feeble Switzerland, it was founded in 1973. It's a fr private foundation. At the moment, we are around 200 employees. And during the seasons, we have different interns, a lot of students that are doing their work here. And what is also special for Feeble Switzerland, we are doing a lot of on-farm research. So we are quite closely connected to the different organic farmings. Here you can see the overview about the different Feeble sites. So there is not only Feeble in Switzerland, there is also in different European countries, there are uh, Feeble organizations and also Feeble Europe. Feeble Switzerland, we have six different departments. So one is soil science, crop science where I'm working, then livestock, socio-economic extension training communication is also quite an important part for Feeble Switzerland. And we also have a um, department with international cooperation. In our department, we had different uh, groups. So one is the cultivation technique, fruit and wine crop, then cultivation technique for vegetable crops, crop protection, phytopathology, then plant breeding, entomology and agroecology. So in our group, we are mainly these five uh, people here. So besides me, I have uh, Clemos Butri in our group, then Fabian Baumgartner. He's responsible for the different orchards at our site in uh, Switzerland. Then we have Andreas Sessel and Patrick Stefani, who are mainly working in the advisory service. Here you can see an overview about the different fruits and berries that we are working on. So it's mainly pip fruit. So here we have apple and pears. But we are also working in stone fruits, mainly in cherry. Since a few years, we also started to work in apricots and plums. And we are also working in berries. So these mainly strawberry, raspberries, but also blueberry a little bit. So on this slide, you can see the research areas that we are doing at Feeble. So we do a lot of variety testing. So we have an own pre, um, testing site. So where we have 25 different apple varieties, 13 pear varieties. We also do plant protection. So the main focus is on scab, then Zuti blotch, and also Marsonina. And uh, we also have a group of phytopathology. They are also testing new substances or also developing new products. What we are also doing is we look at the cultivation technique to optimize this. For example, uh, one issue is the uh, flower thinning in organic farming. So People is working on this issue since quite a long time. We are also want to increase the pea fruit production or juice production in Switzerland. So first we also want to increase the production area, but also the productivity. We also look at the crop protection and also we are expanding the consulting services for this um, juice production. So here on this slide, you can see what are the expectations for pip fruit varieties for organic farming in the view of a farmer. So we want to have an overall low plant protection requirement. So this is also cost, but also uh, so that we have less uh, effect on the environment. The varieties need to be compatibility um, to organic plant protection. So for example, there are different varieties that um, have sometimes a little bit of problem when we use sulfur in the plant protection regime. We want to have varieties that have few physiological disorders. The plant should have a good tree health and vitality. 
we want to have regular good yield, so we don't want to have um, a lot of alternate pairing. And uh, I think the most important thing in the end is we need to have a high customer acceptance because in the end, the fruits need to be bought by the consumer. And uh, what we also need to take into account is that we want to have a full assortment coverage. So we have different um, tasting groups that we want to have. And also during the whole year, we want to have fruits of these different tasting groups. So here you can see an overview of the apple varieties that we are testing at the moment. So we test different uh, varieties from Europe, but also all over the world. And you can also see that we have different breeding numbers. So we are in close collaboration with different breeders from Switzerland, but also from foreign countries. And in our um, testing sites, we have two different management systems. So one part of the trees, they are under standard organic plant protection and cultivation measures. So here it's really the, the, the goal to see the agronomic potential of these varieties. Then in the second smaller part, we make a reduced plant protection. So for scab, we just covered the first, uh, the ascospore phase. So it's more or less until now. And from now on, we don't uh, spray any fungicides. So, and we also do minimal cultivation measures. So for example, we do no flower thinning also to see um, how the different varieties behave in the context of uh, biennial bearing. So in this second part, we can see more or less the genetic potential of these different varieties. So here you can see on this slide how the pip fruit variety testing concept is at FIBEL. So I just showed you that we have the organic variety testing at FIBEL, but we start here. So we collect different information from breeders worldwide, but we also in contact with the other variety testers worldwide. And if we think that the variety could be potentially suitable for organic farming, we um, order some trees, then plant them at Feeble and test them for several years. And then in the end, we also discuss the results that we have at Feeble. So at Feeble, we, do, we look at the agronomic uh, potential of these trees, but we also have the possibility to store fruits and we do uh, different deterioration's at um, different time points. And then the results we discuss with the so-called organic variety team. So this team consists of breeders, but also license holders, other variety testers, producers, storage keepers, and also uh, Swiss retailers. So we really have the whole um, chain and we discuss these results. And if we think that a variety is interesting, then we do some test planting on organic farms. So it's maybe 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 trees. We test this for several years. We do different um, storage trials and also sale. And if then again, the variety is positive, we try to expand the production of this variety. So really the goal of this organic variety is really to strengthening and expansion of the organic pea fruit market with a coordinated qualitative, but also ecological improvement of the range of varieties um, from breeders to the retailers. And here I also want to show you this graph because I don't know, maybe some of you are familiar with this. So in Switzerland, uh, we are quite lucky because we have this so-called flavor group concept. It was developed uh, from people at Feeble in collaboration with a Swiss retailer. So in the end, at the retailer, uh, we don't sell the single varieties, but we sell different tasting groups. So we have this mild to sweet variety um, varieties, then the spicy, slightly acidic varieties, and the really acidic varieties. And as you can see different, on the left-hand side, we have different varieties, then we have these different archetypes, which go, into the different tasting groups. And this is uh, quite useful because normally uh, retailers say, yeah, we need this and this amount to really bring a new variety into the market. But with this concept, we also can sell smaller amount of varieties. So this is, is really helpful to, to test new varieties. And uh, in the end, all this information 
that we are gathering from the variety testing, but also in contact with other um, uh, institutions and farmers and so on. We make some uh, list of recommended pea fruit varieties for organic cultivation. So here uh, it's uh, the German version, but there is also a French version. And this uh, list are updated regularly, normally once per year, and can be downloaded uh, for free on this uh, link here on the Feeble uh, shop. So now I would like to switch um, to cherries. So the current situation. So we have a strong increase in the production area in Switzerland. So um, in the last five years, there was almost a doubling of the area. For um, So I'm talking here about table cherry production. At the moment, we have around 30 um, variety um, hectares of table cherry production, but the production is still below the market demand. So because a lot of um, farmers they do direct marketing and not uh, too much of the production is coming to the market. The production under the weather protection and also the insect nest is necessary for the production of these large table fruits. Um, and with this weather protection and the insect net, we can reduce a lot of different key problems. So you can see here, I have listed some of the problems that we normally have in organic cherry production. So different diseases, but also pests. And with this installation of the weather protection, we can reduce many of these different problems. But one problem remains, and this are the aphids. It's really the, the biggest problem. Also this season, uh, different farmers had really problems with aphids, with the regulation of this um, insect. But what you also have to say is that uh, there is really a high yield security possible. So the farmers in Switzerland, they achieve, I would say 10 to maybe 15 tons per hectare and they get quite some good price. And uh, with this, it can be quite a profitable um, orchard. So the research areas that we have at Feeble, we also do for cherries, we do variety testing. So at the moment we have more than 30 varieties at Feeble. And we test this at Feeble, but also in collaborations with farmer and other research institutes. And we look at uh, the potential of the trees on the plant health, but we also look at the fruit, the fruit quality, etc. But besides variety testing, we also do plant protection. And as I just said before, the key problem is the aphid. So the primary focus is really on this um, aphid at the moment. So we do different um, trials with direct plant protection. But um, yeah, this or last year, we started also with the release of se selected beneficial insect species and also to work with flower strips. So the flower strips are uh, quite uh, good working for apples. And now we also want to introduce this to, to cherry uh, orchards. Yeah, another issue with plant protection is the cherry fruit flight and uh, spotted wing drosophila. But this can be regulated quite good with these full nettings that are already used in organic cherry production over 15 years. We also started to test different leaf fertilizers and we also are um, collecting data about the profitability. So from different farmers, we um, assess the yields and also the expenses that they have to, to calculate this profitability. So this is um, quite an important um, part also to um yeah so now i want to little go a little bit more in detail for the black cherry aphid so it's the main um, pest in modern organic table cherry production with this installed rain protection and the insect nets so there can be really a very strong aphid population and this in the end uh, damage the tree and also can yield into large yield losses because this climate is quite favorable under this um, weather protection. And also with the nets, there are less aphid antagonists such as hoverflies, lace wings, uh, or ladybirds. And what is really um, important is the control of stem mothers. Otherwise we will have uh, pictures like this here. So possible stages for successful regulation. 
or before the hatching, there we can use different oil products, or we can use contact insecticides. Oh, no. uh, different contact insecticides after the hatching of the aphids, but before the curling of the leaves. And another um, stage that can be used for successful regulation is during the return flight of the winged aphids from the secondary hosts to the cherry trees. So this is uh, in late summer towards autumn. And the current recommendation for farmers is to do one to two treatment with the paraffin oil at sprouting. Then if needed, after flowering, they can use pyretrum in combination with the soap product. And also after flowering, there's the possibility to use uh, different Nimasal products, product, but this has uh, quite a slow effect. So for all trees, leaf damages are possible, but we really can prevent strong deformations of the shoots. And in the end, also the fruit contamination, which uh, can be quite problematic. For the young trees, um, there can be really strong aphid damages because of the slow mode of action and the young trees normally they grow quite fast. So here we really need to have additional early treatment with a fast effect. So now I will show you some um, trial that we have done in 2018. So we did one trial with the paraffin oil for different varieties, the variety Cordian Christiana. We did different um, time points of treatment with oil products. Then after some time of the application of these oil products, we assessed the number of aphid colonies. And we did also second trial with pyretrum and soap, also with the same varieties. So there we had the treatment pyretrum plus a soap product and an untreated control. And also here we assessed the number of aphid colonies after some time. And here you can see the results of this trial. So here we have the results for the young trees and here for the old trees. And on the y-axis, you see the number of aphid colonies per trees. And you can see that for the young trees, there was a very good uh, effect with the two treatments, early and combination of early and late, compared to the control where we had uh, different aphids colonies on the trees. For the older ones, only a good effect was achieved in combination with early and late um, spraying. So one application was insufficient for the older trees. Here I can see the results of the trial that we have performed for the pyretrum and soap. And you can see that we have some reduction for the younger trees was by 82%, but it was non-significant and that for the older trees, uh, we had almost no effect. So to conclude uh, the situation for the black cherry aphid, we really can say that the application technique is really crucial for a successful regulation. So paraffin oil at sprouting is the most important treatment. It's really important to reduce the stem mothers at this time point. And with two treatments, or sometimes also already with one, we can have quite a high effect. So for the pyretrum and soap, we can say that the treatment end of flowering should be done at end of flowering before the leaf curl up because it's a contact insecticide and otherwise we cannot reach the aphids. And also here a very good application is necessary. For the ring preparation, we can say that two to three treatments can be done. It's always depending on the situation. So if you have no problem with the aphids, we don't need to spray this neem. Um, and we can get, have quite a good effect when the application is performed at the right time and also with the right machine. Normally for young trees and trees with strong growth, the um, effect is not uh, good enough with the neem products. Another point that we now are also looking at is the index regulation of aphids in the cherries with flower strips and as I just also said before, with the release of beneficial insect. So now I would go to apricots. Here on this slide, I just have some information about the current situation in Switzerland. So the market demand from the trade and also from dire marketing is very high. So this. Uh, uh, organic apricots are really um, 
demanded by the consumers. But at the moment, for organic farms, we really have to say that the yields are too low and too unsecure with the current cultivation system. And we have really strong fluctuations from year to year because it's very depending on the weather situation because most of the production is in open field, so without any weather protection. And if the weather during flowering and also during uh, fruit maturation is dry, then we have good um, yields. And if the weather is bad during these time periods, we normally have quite low um, yields. And we also have mainly one protection, production area, it's mainly in the canton of Wallet uh, region in the mountains. And we have two key problems that are not yet solved. So one is uh, Monilia and the other one is Pseudomonas. And here on this graph, you can see that the area is more or less constant, about this 35 hectares in Switzerland. But you can see the blue line that the yields are really, in one year we have high yields, in another one low. It's really strongly depending on the weather situation. For this, we had a pro project that was finished last year. So it was a project called Development of Yield Safe Production of Organic uh, Apricot Production. It was a project that was uh, in collaboration with Agroscope, so with the Swiss Federal um, Agriculture Research Institute, and the project was funded by the Swiss Federal Office for Agriculture. And the, the, the goal were really to increase the yield reliability, but also the economic efficiency. So we need to have really robust varieties, uh, root stock, but also cultivation systems. And we wanted to develop an organic apricot cultivation for the whole Switzerland. So at Feeble, at, for apricots, we have uh, installed a variety testing in three different environments. So you can see here, on the right hand side, you can see this tunnel. So we have all season weather protection. Then we have a temporary weather protection. So it's on the left hand side and in the middle here with this anti hail net, we don't have any rain protection. So we all only have the um, anti hail net. And what we also look is the, on the effect of normal and high grafting and an interstem on the effect of problems with the pseudomonas. We also had a part in the project where we did uh, plant protection trials. So there it was mainly to search for effective biological treatments to control flower monilia, which can be quite a big problem depending on the weather situation during flowering time. And another issue is the profitability. Also here we want to um, assess data about yields and also about the expenses on the farms. So here I just uh, have listed the different varieties that we are testing at the moment. So in the all season rain protection, we have the roots of guavit, we have an interstem, and we have a high grafting and we have six trees per varieties with different varieties from different countries and also some newer um, varieties from Switzerland, as for example, the varieties Mia and Elsa. Then we have a seasonal rain protection with the same rootstock, but and here we have always a normal height for the grafting, so about 20 centimeters and then the highest uh, grafting. So we did this because in I think it was mainly in France uh, where researchers have seen that there are less problems with pseudomonas when we have a higher grafting. And then as control we also have the varieties without any rain protection. For plums, we don't have um, an own orchard, but we have a collaboration with the experimental site at the Breitenhof. It's the Agroscope Stone Fruit Centers. There we have this um, orchard here. We have 10 different plum varieties with weather protection and without weather protection, you can see here. And here it's uh, the, the research question is mainly about the key problems, uh, Monilia, and also about the plum fruit mods, if we can solve this. And we will also look at the profitability because such a system also costs. And of course, if we have weather protection, we also need to install in irrigation and this will um, have different costs for the farmers. Here, I just want to show you 
some of the results. So you have um, the different varieties. Plus WS means it's with weather protection and the minus is without any weather protection. And you can see the yields of the different years from 2016 to 2019. And you can see that we have quite some different uh, yields between the varieties, but also between the years. So for example, 2017, we had quite some strong frost damage. And there we could see that with weather protection, most of the uh, varieties had some yield and many of them had uh, almost no production and no weather protection was installed. But we do not only look at the total yield, we also look, for example, also at the fruit weight. So you can see here again for the different varieties and the different um, treatments, you can see how the single fruit weight is. And you can see that for most of the varieties, we have a higher single fruit weight if you have a weather protection installed. And that are really big um, difference between the fruit sites. So for example, the variety Katinka has quite small fruits, whereas the variety Top Hit has uh, fruits that are almost 100 grams, so quite big fruits. We also look at the storability. So, um, a certain amount of healthy fruits, they are stored at room temperature and the fruit monilia um, infections were assessed after three days, after seven days and after 10 days. And you can see that we have quite difference between varieties, but also between the different treatments. So for example, here you can see that Tegera is at quite some high infections with fruit monilia, whereas another variety or the variety presenter had uh, not a lot of problems with Monilia. Now we go to raspberries. So, so far we had really a low production of organic summer raspberries. So, so the, most, the biggest production was um, performed with autumn raspberry, but currently there we have a strong increase in the production area of raspberries. So plus 50% in the last three years. And also different bigger producers um, established some big orchards. So now also some summer organic raspberries are delivered to the market. And one trend that we also can see is that the cultivation is coming more and more under weather protection. So with this, it's um, yeah the fruits they stay healthy also for the for the harvest it's easier, and also the storability of the of these fruits under weather protection is, is higher. Another trend that we see that we have shorter duration of the cultures. So yeah, in the past, maybe 15 years, uh, we produced on the same area, but now the duration of the culture is really getting shorter. This is, has some quite some good effect on plant health, but also on the yield, the fruit size, etc. And another issue that we see since uh, some years, we have an increase of so-called terminated cultivation with some long cane uh, plants. At Feeble, we also do variety testing, but we also look at different cultivation systems. So we also compare different varieties in production with weather protection and without weather protection. We also look at this long cane cultivation under weather protection. So maybe, just an information for the people who are not that familiar with raspberries. So long cane plants are plants that are grown at the nursery. So we have then in the end her pot normally two long canes. They should be around one meter 80. And then in the end they are getting in the freezer and you can buy them, plant them and roughly two to three months later you can already start with harvesting fruits. So we look at the cultivation under organic um, situation for this long cane. But we also test the suitability of different substrates. So peat-free substrates for the raspberry fruit production. We also look at plant protection. So I think it was three years ago, we had quite some problems with the raspberry leaf mites and we did different uh, plant protection trials, but we also want to improve the production of the young plants. So this is also quite an important issue 
at Fibla at the moment, so the very young plants to make plants with better production. And we also look here at the profitability. So we assess from the different farmers, the yields and also the expenses that they have. So here you can see a trial that we did last year at Feeble. So we tested different substrates in fruit production for long cane plants. So you can see the plants, they were delivered on the 26th of April. Then we planted them. You can see how they developed. So they looked quite nice. And we started with harvest at the 22nd of July. But as you can see here on the last image, we already had some problems. So the, the, the leaves, they started to getting brown and also the fruit quality wasn't that good at this time point. And we had different problems when we also looked under the ground. So there was a problem with the fine root formation because it's quite difficult, the irrigation with the substrate. So sometimes it was too wet and it was again too dry. So it's, it's really quite complicated. Um, also the fertilization of this uh, culture is quite difficult and if you have a weather protection that you can see here sometimes it's getting also quite hot and this is also can be a problem for the plants. What we also do we look also at the fruit quality so we assess the fruits with weather protection without weather protection and for example here you can see uh, for raspberries, we had no um, botrytis infestations when we produce under weather protection, but we had some problems, um, some 5% of botrytis infestations without weather protection, although we had dry weather conditions. And then we also look at the storage, at the shelf life of the plants. So we had uh, the fruits, they were harvested, they were optic optical, uh, really uh, healthy. They were two days in the fridge and then two days at room temperature and then they looked like this. So you can see the fruits that were harvested with weather protection, they looked really nice. And the ones that were produced without any weather protection had already some quite um, high infestations with botrytis. Now I would go to strawberries, the situation. Also for the strawberries, we had quite an increase in the protection area in Switzerland. So it was plus 50% in the last five years. The cultivation is also for strawberries, it's getting more and more uh, importance under weather protection. So really from this classical field cultivation with fresh plants to more and more weather protection cultivated cultivation, as you can see here on the image on the left bottom. And with this, we can already exclude some of the problems. So normally we don't have any problems with botrytis and if we then include an insect net around, then we can also exclude, for example, the spotted wing drosophila. What we also see, we have different um, producers that combine the production of vegetable and, and berries. So in the summer, they do, for example, strawberry production or raspberry production. And in the autumn, they move the tunnels and then they can produce, for example, different salads. What we also see for the strawberries that we uh, want to prolong the period of fruit production. So we have at the moment we have a little bit more or less a peak in the middle of the season, but we want to have an early and also late production. So we want to have late and early locations to produce this, or we can also look at the varieties. So we have early and late varieties. Uh, and so on. And also here we have uh, used um, these terminated cultures. So with, for example, the tray plants, you can plant them. And also here you can start with harvest eight weeks after planting. Another uh, option is to use everbearers. So they flower different times during the season. So you can, for example, take out the first flowers and then with these everbearers, it would be the idea to have a late production in the year. So as I just said, we want to shift the supply peaks. We do variety testing at Feeble. We also want to improve the cultivation system. Also for strawberries, we test the suitability 
of different substrates. We want to improve the production of runners, so this is together with um, young plant producers. And we also want to improve the production of organic young plants. So there we have this um, different time of pottings, different substrates, different fertilization, and so on. And then in the end, we also want to test the performance of the young plants that were produced with the different, um, for example, fertilization treatments. And also for the strawberry, uh, for the strawberries, we look at the profitability. Here you can see an example that we have done last year in collaboration with the young plant producers. So we produced tray and mini tray strawberry plants. So these are all plants of the variety clary, so the same variety, and you had different fertilization treatments. And you can see here the control without any additional fertilization, the plants doesn't look so nice. Here we have a product that had quite some healthy plants and other ones that were in between. And the strawberry variety testing at Feeble, we have different locations. So we have an own variety testing at Feeble. So with weather protection, here we can test different varieties, but we also have collaborations with farmers so that we can also see how the varieties do uh, without any weather protection. Then we are um, we also assess the experiments of different producers. So they we ask them how the yield is, how the fruit quality is, um, and so on. And we are also in exchange with other research institutions. And then from this, we make different um, variety lists. There is a berry bulta that can be um, ordered for free. This is sent during the season by email regularly. And then you also have a website, bioactuel.ch, where the farmers can go on and uh, they can see different um, information for the berry cultivation. And as I just uh, said at the beginning of the presentation, we have this website, uh, shop.feeble.org, where you can go and download different variety lists, not only for strawberries, but also for raspberries and so on. And to find more information also about our research or for Feeble in general, you can go to the feeble.org website or the, uh, the website um, bioactuel.ch. And you find also Feeble on different social media uh, channels. So for example, on YouTube, there are different, um, sometimes quite interesting uh, movies that you can look. You can, we also have a Twitter account, Facebook, and also LinkedIn where you can get different information. So now I thank you very much for your attention. And now we would have quite some time for questions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Michael, for this uh, colorful and uh, nicely put together presentation. We got a very good overview of the different research uh, lines that you have at Fibol for the different crop types. I. Uh, I would like to suggest for the audience to raise your questions now. Please raise your hand if you have a question and unmute your microphone to proceed uh, with your question. Okay, so Evelyn first and then Costas. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, it's a pity that we to be able to visit. Uh, such a nice place. Um, my question is really related with the long canes that you describe. For me, it's not uh, uh, really clear, but maybe I do not understood properly. If uh, there is a variety that you are developing with long canes, or it is a another question that I didn't understood properly. Okay, or well, maybe I didn't uh, explain it very well. So. Uh... The long cane is just a type of, of, of plant. So we have different varieties that can be used. So mainly for raspberries, it's the variety tulamine. And the idea of this long cane is that the, the plant is produced. So it's a, a summer raspberry. So it's, it's produced at the nursery and they produce them in the pots. And we have two long canes. So they are maybe, yeah, 
one meter eighty high, and then uh, towards the winter, the nursery men they store them in the freezer, and you can order them. And ideally, you plant them maybe in April. Then you plant these these uh, canes, and around two to three months later, you can already start to harvest them, as you have seen in one of the slides that I showed you. So you you get the more or less already um, ready plant. But what that I have is more. To this oh, sorry. Plants, they are quite quite expensive. So the profitability is also one uh, uh, task that we are looking at at the moment. Yeah. Is that the, I, to be sure that I understood properly? Then the long cane is uh, uh, is the is the moment that you select to to have in the now to to sell in the nurseries this kind of varieties in order to be uh, able to produce only three months later. Later, yeah. is, is this okay? Yeah, no, and it's 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 mainly produce, uh, used in conventional production, so to really to terminate the production. So there, they make this oral production, and then maybe they plant some um, long canes, and then two months later, and like this, they can really um, shift production and yeah, it's to ready to ready to to pick it. <laughs> to pick. Yeah, but it's but it's it's really a new a new plant type for organic cultivation and. Yeah, it's it's also not that easy as I showed you because really they, in a very short time they need to produce a lot of uh, of fruits also to get enough nutrients to produce the the fruits in the end. Yeah, and they are at the moment quite expensive. So yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you for your question, Evelyn. So Costas next, and after Costas it will be Francois. Hello to everybody. Uh, thank you, Michael, for this detailed, very, uh, very nice uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I, my question is uh, linked with the recommendations, the, the recommendation list. Uh, my first question is how many years it take you to assess a variety before you uh, uh, list it in this recommendation list? And the second is, uh, um, except the recommendations on adaptation for organic, uh, the performance and uh, maybe geographical uh, advices where this this uh, uh, variety uh, could be uh, planted. Um, is there any uh, recommendation for um, act linked with the activities of uh, organic nurseries? So you can recommend somebody where you can uh, obtain uh, this uh, variety. And uh, so you are also uh, helping these uh, nurseries to spread the organic uh, varieties if they are avail available. Thank you. OK, so thank you very much for your question. So maybe to the first question, so how many years it takes? So I think. Uh, for which fruit <laughs> did you ask? So it's a little bit di different between, uh, for example, for strawberries and for, for apples. I don't know. What was okay, uh, let's say for for peat fruits and for stone fruit, if, if there is a, a difference, so generally I speak. Yeah, as I said, for the for the peat fruits, we have different um, levels of, of testing. So I would say at least for, for maybe for apple, I want to have them maybe at least for three to four years with fruit production at Feeble, where we can also store some fruits and see how they are. And then if it's positive, then we go to farmers and on different locations. So maybe also to your question for the recommendation of the location. So we have different farmers across Switzerland where we test these varieties. And then also there we want to get at least the experience of, of different years so I would say yeah also there maybe three to four years to to really take it on this list and maybe for the strawberries of course because we can make every year a testing there it needs maybe a little bit less time but we also incorporate in this uh, recommended list also the information that we get from other institutions and also from the breeders etc and then 
the second question was about the availability in the, the, the nursery man. So it's a, it's a good question. So for example, for the berries, we started, I think it was two or three years ago, where we had a really, we collect from the different nurseries, the, the varieties that they are producing. And we also sent this at the beginning of the season to the farms, so, so the really a big list where I can see this and this variety is possible to buy it there and there in organic quality. And also for the other variety list, so for example, for the for the apples, at the end of the list, we also have different nurseries where they can buy the different varieties in Switzerland, but also across uh, Europe, so that they really know where to buy or to order these different uh, varieties. Thank you. Um, Costas, did it uh, answer all your questions? Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, thank you, Michael and Costas. And then Francois, the floor is yes. yours. Yes, hello, everyone. And thank you, Michael, for this uh, presentation. Um, maybe I missed the information regarding cherry, cherry assessment, but I wonder if you uh, expect any possibility of uh, partial resistance of uh, cherry cultivars to uh, black aphid, or uh, if you observe no resistance so far and there is no genetic resistance to expect? Well, dif difficult question. So what I can say, we have, yeah, as I said, we had around maybe 30 different varieties and we see some difference, but if it's a partial resistance or if what is really the, uh, the issue about this, I, I really cannot say, but there are differences. We have really some variety that we can say that, they have a big problem with the aphids and other maybe a little bit less, but if it's coming from the genetic, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I cannot answer. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I don't see more hands uh, raised at the moment. Would anybody like to pick up the courage and pose the next question? <laughs> Yes, if, I, if I may go on uh, uh, with my question, uh, uh, is there anyone in uh, Vadensville in in, uh, in charge of uh, such a uh, cherry breeding? And uh, is it possible to share your uh, your uh, slides to for me to to get back in the in the the results you presented? So the first question, so uh, there is no cherry breeding in Switzerland, but there are also um, different people, for example, at Agroscope that are dealing with uh, variety testing. And we are also in quite com close contact. So I think it was two years ago where we somehow um, started with the cherry um, or, uh, variety team. It's not only organic, but feeble is a part of this and different um, locations in Switzerland and also farmers and we really exchanged information about different cherry varieties. So there we are, have a quite close uh, collaboration. And uh, regarding the question about the slides, I can send you the presentation, but as far as I understood Agnes, the, the, my presentation was anyway recorded and should be available somewhere, but maybe Agnes can comment to this. Okay. Yeah, yes, so the idea is that we are going to publicly make it available on the EcoPB website of uh, Feeble for young breeders and students. So it will be put on the website of uh, Feeble, maybe also on the LiveSeed website, but I think it's uh, it's better parked on, on the EcoPB website because that's longer term than the LiveSeed website mm. anyways, but it will be shared, yes. But uh, maybe Francois, if you want, you can also contact me directly by phone or email if you want to yeah, have sure. some exchange on some varieties or tests that we have done, of course. Okay. 